Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franklin. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Mm, a most elegant dinner, Mrs. Norton. Thank you, sir. It was good, wasn't it? You were improving. I only had one can in it. I hope you noticed. I did. Was that what I almost broke my front tooth on? Oh, no, that was my baking powder <laughs> biscuit. Weren't they awful? I either put too much baking powder in or not enough. Either one, I don't uh, know. Maybe you put in uh, too little biscuits. How's that? <laughs> Started out by being nice and end up being nasty. You ask for it. Seriously, I think I'm very patient, loving, and an understanding husband. So do you? I. One of the best husbands I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Now go in the living room, read your paper, and I'll have the dishes done in no time. I'll help you. You won't. I've told you ever since we've been married, I don't approve of men helping with the dishes. Yep, and ever since we've been married, I've been helping. But you insist, so what can I do? Come on. Here, I'll show you how we'll manage. Now, we'll stack them up here, so. Now, that's it. And make it almost hey, be careful. in one trip. Oh, now, David, that's enough. They'll all topple and break. Here, let me have that cup. You can't Ooh, balance wait, wait, be it careful, like be that. Careful. Now, get away, get away. If you, if, if you push me, I can't do it. I'll tickle you. <laughs> don't you dare. Now, hold the door open. Don't let it swing. Here I come. David, please let me take that cup. It's the key. You let me alone and go back and finish clearing the table. Now, now, there we are. Hey, take that bundle of laundry away so I can put them down. I hope my shirts came back. Wait a minute. Put them right in the sink. They did. Where's the dishpan? What did? Your shirts. I don't use a dishpan. I like to wash them under running water. I like the dishpan. I don't. Anyway, what's your business to know how I did it? Because I'm washing. You're not. You're dry. No, I won't. I want to wash. David, I hate to drive. So do I. But washing dishes, is, it's such a messy job for a man. You get your hands wet and the soap and everything. You, it, drying is much nicer. Mm, that's why I want to let you do it. David, get away from that sink. Where's the soap? It's such a sissy thing to wash dishes. Oh, it's much sissier to dry. Hey, look at the nice, clean dish towel, all red and white and folded and ironed and boiled. Bertha boils the dish towels. Isn't she wonderful? Mm -hmm, that's terrific. See that you do the same. Go clear the table. You didn't leave me anything to clear but a salt cellar and a cake plate. That's what you call efficiency. It is not. It's silly to waste the trip in for just two things. Now, bring a dining room chair back with you, will you? What for? Oh, just so you don't waste the trip. Idiot. <laughs> hey, why do I have two frying pans to wash? I made a typographical error and one of them had to begin all over again. Uh, I didn't bargain for two frying pans. What was that? Nothing. Sounds like a flower bloom. Oh, you're so careless. I told her not to leave plates on the table. I dropped it. <laughs> you dropped it. I don't see what's so funny about it. <laughs> you don't? What do I do with the pieces? I can't. Uh, what do you think you do with them? Here, stick them together. I mean, I, do I dump them in the garbage pail naked or wrap them up in a newspaper? Well, the razor blade you wrap up in a newspaper, but you can drop these in naked. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it wasn't a very good plate anyway. It had a chip in it. Mm -hmm. It's got a little larger chip now. <laughs> I suppose you want a metal. Here. Here, dry. Not another word out of you. David, this saucer is not washed clean. Where? Where? I don't see a thing. There. There. Oh, now, wait a minute. I'll have to get this up to the light. <laughs> don't look so close. That's the design on it. It's a buttercup. The I know design. a buttercup when I see well, it, one. it could have been an egg. An egg? Darling, you have to work tonight. Oh, it smells like a buttercup, too. <laughs> I'm working. <laughs> I'm going to come home after a hard day at the office and stand over a sink. I mean, over blueprints or plans or something. Mm, what do you want to do? Nothing if you're going to be busy. Aren't I noble? My evening belongs to you, you alone. What would you like me to do? Nothing. <laughs> it's funny, I'd rather do nothing with you than something with anybody else. I've got to think that one out. Give me a minute. <laughs> How would you like to go to the theater? <laughs> I'd adore it. It's too late, though. No, it isn't. It's only quarter of eight. Oh, we never get tickets for anything good at the last minute. And the tickets cost a fortune, David. Why don't we just go to the movie instead? Say, how'd you like to see a good dog picture in the neighborhood? Yes, I'd love it. Let's go. What's playing? I don't know. I, I just asked you if you'd like to see one. I would. You mean you were just hoping that there's one around someplace? Sure. What's wrong with that? 
Look, let's just take part life and go to whatever is playing. I've had enough parts here. I want to know what's playing before I start out. Oh, dear, you have no wild, sweet spirit of adventure in you. Yes, I do. Here I come with wild, sweeping spirit of adventure. Is that what it is? <laughs> but I don't have any when it comes to sitting through a bad movie. Hey, wait a minute. I do know what's playing, but I just don't remember. It's pretty good, though. I mean, when I passed the theater, I looked at the marquee. How do you pronounce that? Marquee or marquise? Mm, Marcuse, I think. Look it up in the dictionary. <laughs> Go ahead, look it up. Look it up in the dictionary. Oh, David, don't be silly. What's playing in the dictionary? <laughs> I don't remember. Well, don't oh, take it so don't. hard now. I all remember this is pretty good. <laughs> I, mean, I said to myself when I was walking the movie, you know, when I was walking back, oh, I thought you were talking about that. the dictionary. I said, in a pinch, we could see it. <laughs> in a pinch, we could see it. Well, what's the movie about now? Get oh, yourself David, off, you, know. you exhaust me. It's not <laughs> historical. I mean, the costumes in the picture up front look modern. There's a Mickey Mouse playing in it. Well, what do you know? Why didn't you say so in the first place? Come on, hang up that dish towel. We're on our way. Say you didn't leave a very clean sink. You're supposed to swish it around with soap powder. You swish it around in the morning. I'm going to the Mickey Mouse. Oh, David, what would I do if I married a man that didn't like Mickey Mouse? Now, what would you do if you didn't? You know something? Mama loves them, too. Well, go call her up. Oh, darling, you are so sweet. Well, the one thing worse than a man being sweet, that's being cute. Sweet the way I mean it is a very sweet thing to be. It's a combination of understanding and gentleness and all kinds of... And sugar and spices and everything nicest. <laughs> oh, I'll go for... I hate to think of her spending every evening alone. Say, you know, there's no answer to the phone. I wonder what's happened. She's gone out, probably. Maybe she went over to your Aunt Louise's for dinner. Maybe, but I don't think so. Why not? She didn't say anything about it. Does she have to account to you for everything she does? Get your hat and coat. I hate to get into a movie theater after everybody's breathed up all the air. So do I. <laughs> David, I phoned Mama twice today. There's no answer. Well, she was probably out marketing. But I gave her a chance to come back before I called again. That was big of you. Still no answer. Maybe the phone's out of order. No, I asked the operator to check on it. Well, I'll be a big girl and not worry about her. I'm ready. Hey, wait a minute. Let's close the windows in case it rains. Ouch, this window stick. Oh, now I broke my nail. Let me see. Where? I didn't, but I could have. Switch out that lamp over there. I'll put out the lamp in the hall. Wait a second. I haven't got a handkerchief. Oh, never mind. You can lend me yours. Anyway, I don't think it's a sad picture. Well, we're not going to any picture. David, what made you change? Because you'd be on pens and needles. You wouldn't enjoy a minute of it. You're only going because you think I want to go. Well, don't you? No, not particularly. Then what are you walking to the door for? Where are you going? Over to Mother's. Set your mind at rest. You're cooking up all sorts of ideas, I can oh, tell. Oh, darling, I'm so ashamed. I don't, I, I don't know why. I just get feelings. What do we do when we get there? We have a key to her apartment. I know, but if she's not home, we... we... Well, once we find out she hasn't slipped in the bathtub or oh, got asphyxiated... David, or we I'm can... such a coward. If she's not home, we'll phone Aunt Louisa. What do we do if she's not at Aunt Louisa's? Sit and wait for her to come back. Then we'll both give her a piece of our minds for daring to budge out of the house without asking you for express permission. You make me feel like such a fool. Look, if we find she hasn't slipped in the bathtub or anything, I'll go to the movies with you. And then afterwards we can phone her and she'll be home by then. It's a deal. Come along. Sure you don't think I'm silly? Of course I think you're silly. Well, I think you're silly, too, for giving in to me, but I, I just know, get... I know. You get feelings. No sense in ringing the bell. Move out of my light, buddy. Now, let's see if this is the key. All keys look alike in the dark. Where's that cat? Near enough. Claudia, your hands are like ice. There's nothing to be nervous about. I'm not nervous. David, there's a light in the bedroom. Well, stop looking so scared. She's probably just gone. Mother! Mama, are you home? Claudia? You scared the wits out of us. Where have you been all day? Can't I have any privacy? Mama, you're in bed. Of course I am. It's half past eight. Time for all nice old ladies to be in, in bed. Gesundheit. I mean, you're sick Thank in you. bed. Nonsense. What are you two doing over here anyway? Go on home. Hold your horses, Mother. Now, what is all this? Nothing at all. I went to bed early. I have a little cold. Now, we're getting closer to the truth. Now, keep out, both of you. There's no need for you catching a cold. You were all right yesterday. When did this come on? In the middle of the night. 
How much temperature, Mother? Oh, not much. How much? But it's down now. What's the difference? A lot of difference. Why didn't you call me? I was glad to be rid of you. You didn't even answer the phone. No, I was hoping if you didn't get any answer, you'd think I was out. I guess you, uh... I dared like a fool. You can't even be trusted. You didn't feel very much like getting up to the phone, did you, Mother? Oh, frankly, I didn't, David. Let's take your pulse. Oh, now, please, please, don't come too near the bed. Quiet. Give me your wrist. What is it, David? He's still a little feverish. Do your bones ache, Mother? Any coughing? Much less than this morning. Hmm. Very professional, David. He always wanted to be a doctor. He'd make a good one, too. And you're happy too, and I would. Well, where'd you get that expression? It's all his own, isn't it, silly? <laughs> Very expressive, though. Now, now, come on, children. You can open the window a little while you're here and run on home. I'll be fine in the morning, and I'll phone you the first thing. But, Mommy, you should be having fruit juices every two hours. And who's going to fix your breakfast and answer the doorbell? Tell me that. Anybody think that a person never had the flu to hear you two carry on? And Claudia's right, nevertheless. If you can't lie here alone, you ought to have a nurse. A nurse? Oh, don't be ridiculous. In the first place, you can't get one. They're too scared. Oh, I think I can get one for you right away. Really, can you, David? Yes, the only trouble with her is that she's married. When she comes on a case, she brings her husband along. Oh! Oh, oh, I think I know who you mean. A very pretty girl, very attractive, very bright. No, no, you're getting her mixed up with someone else. This girl's husband is very uh, handsome. Very brilliant fellow, too. Now, look here. I'm not so feverish that I can't guess what you two are trying to hatch up between you, and I will not have it. Well, we're not asking you any questions, Mrs. Brown. I'm going home now to tell this girl's husband to bring over his shaving stuff and a pair of pajamas. Hey, tell him to bring his wife's nightgown, too, and her toothbrush. Gosh, we're lucky to have that extra bedroom I used to have before I got married. Got me so mixed up now, I don't know whether I'm delirious or not. You mean you both intend to sleep here tonight? Don't be so inhospitable. Darling, you better bring some extra oranges from my icebox. Mm-hmm. Anything else? How'd you like a little water ice from the drugstore, Mother? David, you're a mind reader. I've been longing for some all day. Make mine chocolate, David. Oh, and David, when you go home, turn off all the radiators. It'll be too hot. And be sure to put the cat out before you leave. What cat? That nice little black cat we haven't got. Sounds like old times. David, you're a bad influence on your wife. (laughs) Why don't you make her realize that she's married and has a home of her own? Well, did you ever hear the old saying, circumstances alter cases? This is one of those circumstances, Mother. Mm -hmm. You know, there's another old saying that I suddenly remember. A little trite, but awfully true. What? What? Oh, something about not losing a daughter, but... Gaining a son. All story material used on this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. Take a tip, lady, from those lucky people who have a Coca-Cola cooler where they work and work refreshed. Why not you, too? All you have to do is reach into the refrigerator in your kitchen, take out a bottle of ice-cold Coca-Cola, and enjoy the pause that refreshes yourself. So make a note to keep Coca-Cola in your icebox all the time for refreshment anytime. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember. Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>